Welcome back. So somewhere along the ways, Cubase 13's decided to cooperate with Synthesizer V's ARA plugin. So here we go. Um, you may recognize this tune from my AI song uh, building. And uh, let's just remind you. What I decided to do, now that it's a lot easier to put vocal lines into Synthesizer V with this audio to MIDI feature, I thought, why don't I try an alternate idea where I put a little bit of rhythm or a different rhythm than what was originally kind of generated by the AI tools. Uh, I think Melody Sauce is what I was using to, to make most of the melody ideas. And because obviously they don't have any human feel whatsoever. And of course us humans, not perfect, are timing a little bit of before and behind the beat, just the usual stuff. So what I have done, and bear yourselves because it's me singing now, you don't have to sing, that's the best part. Really, you just have to record your voice in time to the music because it's easier if it captures the pitch as well. It doesn't need to, mainly it's capturing most of the words and the timing, and the timing is really key. But I thought I would, well, I found myself singing it regardless if I tried to speak it in or not. So here it is. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making, but now I'm free to move on and my heart is breaking. Okay, so obviously I'm a, an octave down from Solaria, but you know, we have the tools, right? Anyway, let's get down to it. It's as simple as this. You click on your track where your vocal is, and you select the extension from your list of extensions, and there it is, Synthesizer V Studio ARA plugin. Now, I have to warn you that um, as much as it is working now in Cubase 13, it has crashed me a few times, so just uh, putting it out there. Okay, so what you see when it opens is it's just like a, a ghostly version of your piece there. But if you were to play now, there's no sound whatsoever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute the background. So what you have to do then is add a voice. I'm going to use Solaria. And then you right click and you go extract notes from audio. Now from my last video, you may remember that pitch correction puts the blocks right on the grid and transfer pitch onto converted notes means that it's listening to my pitch and using that for the pitch changes. I'm going to do the pitch correction first. So let's have a go with that. Obviously, I'm an octave lower, so I'm going to just select all of these and then control U to jump it up an octave. Okay, so let's just go to the beginning of that and hit play, and here we go. Are you still be trapped in the cage of a mile making? But now I'm free to move on and my heart is breaking. Oh, bum notes down there. I must have been a little bit out of tune. Not bad. What you won't hear anymore is your original vocal because this is taken over, right? The, it's basically been replaced with this. It's still there. Right? You can see your waveform. But while the um, extension is loaded, and on Cubase you get that little logo in the corner there letting you know there's an extension loaded this takes control. So like I said, if I move this around, oops, not that. If I move this around, so does the uh, Cubase pointer. And of note, which is really fantastic, because it's now integrated with ARA, it actually follows tempo changes as well. Okay, so if I want to do a different version of it, i.e. the, um, the non-pitch corrected version, I just hit extract notes again from the same clip. Turn that off, transfer pitch onto the converted notes. 
This time, the pitch will be coming from my performance exactly, so the blocks won't be right on the grid up and down wise. And as far as timing goes, they're already not on the grid because my timing wasn't perfect, which is the way it should be. Okay, let's run that. There they are. Control A to select them all. Control U to jump them up an octave. So what do we got for words? I, you, still, be, trap, tin, <laughs> the, cage. You know what? It's actually good clues for when you're manually putting things in. You basically just type in whatever sounds like what you want it to be. You don't have to spell things properly, right? Cage is spelled with a K here. So there's no question whether it's a soft C or a hard C, right? Because they used a K. So um, it's a, a good little learning tool as well, looking at this. All right, let's have a listen to this one. Are you still be trapped in the cage of a mile making? But now I'm free to move on and my heart is breaking. My heart is breaking, H-O-D. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try that again, and I'm just going to reduce something here. No detection. Let's go... Actually, let's try it at 100%. Control U to jump up an octave. And you can see the little uh and uh noises I make between the words because they're coming out as little blobs way out of, way out of the range. But you may notice, um, well, let's just play this, see what this came out like. Oh, well, the timing's gone a bit funny here, hasn't it? Let's move the note before. Hmm. I are you still, but be trapped in the, the cave. Yeah, it's tried too hard to, to control those little weird note things or little noises and breaths and stuff between words. So let's, uh, let's do the extraction again. And I'm going to put it down to... Ah, oh, let's go to 50. May as well, right? Are you still be trapped in the cage of my own making? But now I'm free to move on and my heart is breaking. Okay, I actually really like how it followed this. Uh, and my heart is breaking, how it does the my with the the big pitch bend. Look at that in the middle. But it sounds a lot more realistic. And my heart is breaking. I think for this demo, though, we'll go back to the original pitch corrected version. All right, here we go. Are you still be trapped in the the cage of my own making but now i'm free to move on and my heart is breaking these last two notes here are obviously out of the scale so I'll just select those and hold shift and i can move them straight up so i don't have to worry about them slipping off because we're on do not snap obviously so I'm going to go away and, and just edit all these to the proper words and close up some little weird things that are going on like this where it drops down here. Be trapped in. In. Uh, <laughs> I don't want that. The Solaria would never do that, so I will remove that. Okay, be back in a sec. Okay, that didn't take long at all. Honestly, it took me maybe two minutes. Let's have a listen. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making, but now I'm free to move on, and my heart is breaking. Okay, there's one thing I just noticed there. This trapped didn't really work, so I'm going to do what they actually had. Put trap. And then on the second half, on the second next word, instead of in, I'm going to put tin. So it sounds like trapped tin. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making. Good. Try it with the backing track. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making. 
But now I'm free to move on And my heart is breaking Now the question is, how do we get this into the system? Because I can't just drag and drop this into the project to get an audio file. So I'm assuming that I have to do the usual. Well, I know they have to do the usual. Unless somebody else knows something more than I do, I would say that this is the only way. So I set up the parameters as I normally would. And that's it. And I'll import that. Now see how I drag this to measure nine? Well, my actual clip starts at seven. But if I zoom out even more, you'll see the audio doesn't sync up. And that is because no matter how, what the range was, we were working only on this range, but it still always starts from zero. So I could just type that in there. And now they should line up better. Audio is kind of low. So I'm just going to gain that up. I used to. Okay, that's work. What about the clip we extracted the MIDI from? It still has the extension on it, so that means if I was to play this. I used to. It's still Solari is singing over top of my voice, even though, you know, my voice is still in this file. Now, it depends on which system you're using, but in Cubase, it, I can just turn that extension off. But if I do, I lose all the information. So I can't go back and edit that. So obviously, if I was going to do that, I just click on there again and then save this. Save as, and it should put me into that directory, which it does. So it saved that as a pro, and you'd be able to open it in the standalone version as well. Um, but if I want to hear my original audio back, I have to clear this. In my case, I can just go to extension and put no extension or make extension permanent. And what that does is basically renders down the file in this spot, which I don't want to do because I want to keep my original one. Okay, so I want to alter that. And so I'll just say no extension. And that's it. It's cleared. And so if I was to hit extensions again, it would start a new project or you would have nothing that you've already worked on. So this is the only thing I have to prove that we did what we did. Okay. So um, let's just double check it first. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to process that a little bit with some reverb and EQ maybe and make it sound more like the other version. And I'll play out on the two of those. Hopefully you got some info out of this uh, demo and I'll see you soon. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making, but now I'm free to move on and my heart is breaking. I used to be trapped in a cage of my own making, but now I'm free to move on, and my heart is breaking.